Today I'm going to show you how to put together a companion app by A16Z and it allows you to create characters that you can chat with. You can push this to production, you can chat with them over text messaging, and you can give them personalities, backgrounds, save all of your chat history, and it's like having a little virtual friend. Let's go. This is what the app looks like. So out of the box it comes with a few companions and it supports both ChatGPT and Vicuña. Right now they're both hosted versions of the model but I spoke to the authors and on their roadmap is to add a completely local version, including the vector database, the Redis database, everything. So here's how it works. Let's chat with Alex. I love talking about books and games running on ChatGPT. How's your day? My day is great. How's yours? My day is fantastic. I had a productive painting session earlier, and now I'm taking a break to chat with you. Anything exciting happening in your day? I'm creating a YouTube video on how to create you. Oh, creating a video on how to create me? That's quite meta. I must say, I'm quite flattered. Just make sure you capture my sarcastic side and love for sci-fi books accurately. So I'm going to stop up there, but you could chat with these AI companions. So now let's build it. So the first thing we have to do is go to the GitHub page and I'll drop the URL in the description below. So on their companion app page at the very top, there's this green code button. We're going to click that and we're going to copy the URL right there. So we're going to type git clone. We're going to paste the URL and then we're going to hit enter. And now we have it cloned. Then we're going to change directory into the companion app. Now the companion app uses a lot of different third party tools. Now, if you want to put this on production and put it behind an authentication wall, we're we're gonna be using Clerk for that, and it's super easy. It uses Next.js as the language, Pinecone or Superbase for the vector database, Langchain for putting the LLM together, OpenAI for the text model, and it also uses Replicate to host a Vicuña 13B version, Upstash for the Redis-like database, where you're gonna store your conversation history, Fly for deployment, and Twilio for the text messaging part, although a lot of these are optional. This video is brought to you by NordPass Business. I've been a paid Nord VPN user for many years now, and I absolutely love their products. So I'm really excited to talk about NordPass business today. NordPass is a password manager, but so much more. NordPass eases the burden of access to business accounts across your entire team. So whether you're a team of one or two, or you have thousands of people on your team, you can easily share passwords for different accounts across all colleagues. And not only that, as colleagues come and go, you can easily give them access and revoke access as well. The best part is you can have super secure passwords for every one of your accounts. No more using the same passwords over and over again. No more sharing these passwords in plain text across unsecured channels. Also, it stores your credit card. So you have a company credit card and you can share that company credit card securely with everybody on your team. It also allows you to save credentials, pin codes, alarm codes, Wi-Fi passwords, all shared across your entire organization. Organization. You can easily segment access by different colleagues, super easy to have fine grained control over access, and it gives you early detection warnings when you've had a data breach. So protect and manage your company's digital wealth easily with NordPass Business. My viewers get a three month free trial of NordPass Business, and you can get that by going to nordpass.com slash Matthew Berman, that's the same as my YouTube channel name, and the code to use Matthew Berman. So check it out. And thanks again to NordPass Business for sponsoring this video. So once you CD into the companion app directory, the next thing you're going to do is npm install. There it is done. The next thing we're going to do is open up our companion app folder in Visual Studio Code or whatever editor you use. On the left side, we're going to change the .env.local.example file name to just .env.local. And now we need to fill all of these out. So I'm gonna be using a lot of the defaults, but feel free to play around with this and use some of the other options that they provide. So for the vector database, we're gonna be using Pinecone, but if you wanted to use Superbase, you simply uncomment that and comment out the Pinecone line. And if you wanna make this app as local as possible right now, Superbase has a local hosted version that you can use. Next, we need to sign up for a clerk account and get some of the information from there. So once you sign up for a clerk account, this is what the interface is gonna look like. We're gonna click add application. I'm gonna name it companion, and this is gonna allow us to sign in with Google or sign in with an email address. You can also have sign in with phone number, username, Facebook, Apple, but right now we're just gonna do email and Google. 
and then click create application. All the information that we need is now right here in the middle of the page. So we're gonna grab the public clerk publishable key, switch back to Visual Studio Code, and right here in the publishable key area, we're gonna highlight that and paste it in. Next, we're gonna switch back to clerk. We're gonna click this little show button, and now we have the clerk secret key, which we're gonna highlight. And I'm gonna rotate this secret key before publishing this video. Then we switch back to Visual Studio Code, and we put it right here where it says clerk secret key. All these other settings, we can leave the same. So we want the sign in URL to be sign in, the sign up URL to be sign up, and so on. Next, we're gonna need an open AI API key. Again, you can use Vicuña 13B through Replicate, but today I'm just gonna be using OpenAI. So if you don't already have an OpenAI account, go ahead and sign up. Then you're gonna to come to the API keys page, which is platform.openai.com slash account slash API dash keys. I'm gonna call it companion two because I already have a companion create secret key, and we're gonna copy that key. Then coming back to Visual Studio Code, right where it says open AI API key, we're gonna paste it in and click save. Now, if we were using the Vicuña 13B model, we would actually sign up for a Replicate account and put our token right here. Next, we need a Pinecone account. Once you sign up for a Pinecone account, this is what the default dashboard looks like. We're gonna click create index, enter name, companion, dimensions, we want 1536. That's just the standard for what we're gonna be using it for. We're gonna use S1 and it is a starter plan, so we don't need to pay for it. So click create index. Now, as that's getting set up, we're gonna go to the left side and click API keys. We're gonna click create API key. I'm gonna name it companion two because I already have one. And now we need a couple pieces of information. So the environment, we're gonna go ahead and copy that, switch back to Visual Studio Code and where it says environment, we're gonna paste that in right there. Next, we need the API key and that's this value hidden right here. So we're gonna click this button, show key value. We're gonna copy it, switch back to Visual Studio Code and right there, we're gonna paste it in. The last thing we need is the Pinecone index and that's the name of the index. So the index name is companion, it says ready, so that's what we're gonna enter. So switching back to Visual Studio Code right here, we're just gonna type companion and then save. And if you wanted to use Supabase, you go ahead, sign up for a Supabase account and you can get all these values from Supabase's interface. The next thing we're gonna need is an Upstash account, which allows us to have a hosted Redis. Once you sign up for Upstash and you log in, this is the dashboard that you're met with, and then you're gonna click Create Database. From there, we're gonna type Companion, select Primary Region, I'm gonna select Northern California, Read Region, I'm gonna select Oregon. And we're gonna enable these two values. We want SSL enabled, and we want Eviction enabled, and then go ahead and click Create. Once we do that, we're dropped on this page, and this gives us all the information that we need. So scroll down to the REST API section, and we're gonna click this dot env tab, and that gives us the two values that we're gonna need. So first, we're gonna need the REST URL, so we'll copy it right there. Switch back to Visual Studio Code, and right here where it says Redis REST URL, we're gonna paste it in there. Next, switching back to Upstash, we're gonna reveal the token, we're gonna copy it, switch back to Visual Studio Code, and we're gonna paste it in right here where it says Upstash Redis REST token. Next, switching back to the GitHub page, we have two options now. If we're using Pinecone for our vector database, to generate the embeddings, we're gonna wanna run this line of code. And if we're using Supabase, we'll run this this line of code, but since we're running it on Pinecone, I'm gonna go ahead and click copy on this line. Then we switch back to our terminal. I'm gonna paste that line of code in there and hit enter. And that's gonna create the embeddings that we need based on the character's backstory and all the other information that you give it. And there it's done. The last thing we have to do is just spin up the server now. NPM run dev. And that's it. You can see it's ready. So our local host is right here. We're gonna copy that. We're gonna switch over to our browser and then we're gonna paste it in. And the first thing we're met with is the clerk login screen. And again, this was so simple to set up. And I'm just gonna to go ahead and click continue with Google. And now I'm logged in. And again, if you push this to production, if you have this live on the internet, now you have it behind an authentication wall. So here it is, we're done. We have Alex running on ChatGPT, Rosie on Vicuña 13, and we have Sebastian also running on ChatGPT, Lucky running on Vicuña 13B. Now, even though it doesn't display it, it actually does store all the history of your conversation. And I know that the authors of this project are already working on displaying the entire history of the conversation. So if we switch over to Visual Studio Code, under the tab Companions, we can actually see the different companions and how they get set up. 
So if we click alex.txt, you are a fictional character whose name is Alex. You enjoy painting, programming, and reading sci-fi books. You are currently talking to a human who is very interested to get to know you. And you can create other personalities as well, or you can come in here and edit these directly. The other thing you'd need to do is come into the companions.json file and make the adjustments here as well. So you can actually upload your own image. You can upload a phone number, and that's if you wanna use Twilio. You can also specify which large language model is gonna be used as well. So I couldn't quite get the Twilio part working. I kept getting a 401 error, but I'm going to keep playing with it, see if I can get that to work. And if I can, I'll leave an update in the description. So now you can create your own companion, go ahead and chat with them and have fun. If you like this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.